Look, my horse, my horse, my horse is pretty okay, I guess. Look at my horse, my horse is amazing, give it a lick. This past week, we were ready to have our minds absolutely blown at the release of a new type of monster with a new standard of difficulty. Some people thought we were getting a G-rank equivalent monster with new moves that would blow our minds. And instead, we got a horse that is a little chunkier in the health and damage department. As far as I can tell, after extensive testing, Arch-Tempered Kieran has zero new moves. The size of his moves' hitboxes are entirely unchanged, and the speed of these moves are also unchanged. You might be able to make the argument that he's more aggressive, but that's not really something that can be properly measured. Everyone I knew expected us to get new moves due to some sort of rumor of a PR misspeak that may or may not have happened, I, I don't know. There's a lot of conflicting reports on the whole thing. And for everyone that thought there might be new moves, it's supposedly super disappointing. But that said, if you actually look at this in a kind of hype-free vacuum, this new Kieran is not only exactly what we were promised, but it's also somewhat of an exciting challenge. If you thought that old-tempered K-Dog was enough to one-shot you, be prepared to be enlightened by the existence of the new master of the shiny and deadly Arch-Tempered Kieran. Arch-Tempered Kieran, the best way to explain him, is essentially just tempered-tempered. He gets what tempered do over regular monsters, except on a tempered monster already, and a health boost because most tempered monsters don't just get health boost, but you know, that's, that's a side thing. This is a prime example of a games community making its own decisions about the game's development, and then being disappointed when they're wrong. We all just sort of decided that Arch-Tempered Kieran, to be a relevant update, would have to have a new bunch of moves, sort of like G-Rank. However, think about this for one moment. This week was Arch-Tempered Kieran, but just a week ago, we had a new monster. Hi. An entire new monster. Hello. So we're given a limited time upgrade to an existing monster the week after that, and we expect it to be like an entire rework of that monster? No! You can't just expect them to do things that quickly. We've been getting one new monster a month. Anything extra past that is ridiculous. In fact, even this is sort of ridiculous. A monster a month is a lot of work. Us getting just an upgraded version of a monster to tide us over is quite nice of them. Come on, guys. It's ridiculous. Be thankful for what we've gotten. Be grateful that we're getting as much as we are in the time frame that we're getting it. My personal thoughts on this fight are somewhat mixed. I really like that the devs are trying to give us a new challenge and something that is truly difficult, but the added difficulty feels almost artificial rather than the natural difficulty that we could have if we had the introduction of new moves or a change in the speed of the moves. This new Kirin is very simply a more difficult version of regular tempered Kirin. Which, by the way, not only do I feel obliged to say regular tempered when I'm talking about tempered monsters, but I'm also very annoyed at the fact that I feel obliged to say regular tempered because obviously I just mean tempered, but it's not a differently difficult version of Kirin. Arch tempered Kirin has approximately one and a half times the health of regular tempered Kirin, I still hate that I have to say that, and deals somewhere between 25 and 50% more damage depending on the attack. If you want to kill Arch tempered Kirin, my main advice is to bring a build based around hit and runs, such as a crit draw greatsword set or even just your average bow set with fire element. This monster is one that you do really have to build a build around. You have to set yourself up to have a set so that you can defeat him. The two main things to keep in mind for Arch-Tempered Kirin's sets are Thunder Resistance, as three of them is worth 20 Thunder Resistance, which will keep you alive a lot of the time. And then, surprisingly, Tool Specialist. The newly released wonderful piece of art that is the Temporal Mantle has the very unique spot of actually being worth more than Rocksteady, at least on this specific fight. The effect is similar, but a lot of Arch-Tempered Kirin's attacks can actually one-shot you even through Rocksteady. So what the Temporal Mantle allows you to do is to fight without worry of falling over in one hit, while still being able to keep up the attack in general. The Thunderproof Mantle is a sort of obvious counter to Kirin, as Kirin's main source of damage is Thunder, and the Thunderproof Mantle sort of, you know, stops Thunder damage. It makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? 
but it simply cannot be understated just how effective this mantle is for this encounter. The combination of the temporal and thunderproof mantles leaves you with somewhere less than a minute of downtime between their uses, as their use and recharge times line up incredibly well. If you combine this with full tool specialist, then you have yourself a beautiful near 100% mantle uptime, and these mantles essentially allow you to treat Arch Tempered Kirin like a regular fight, rather than being scared of having your face blown off at the single slightest movement, lowering the difficulty considerably. Now for playstyle, you need to make sure that you never get hit above all else. The hunt may last forever, but you will make it through. Most of Monster Hunter World is a collection of sprints, a bunch of 100 meter dash monsters. Tempered Joe started something that Lunastra continued, and the Arch Tempered system seems to be fully intent on making a staple of the game. Longer, tougher fights. A lot of people have criticized, and often continue to criticize World, for having such tiny speed run times on the endgame monsters, and the devs are definitely trying to fix that, and it's admirable that they're essentially just listening to the community and trying to give us what we want. On top of the fight itself, we've even gotten a new armor set, the Kirin Gamma armor set, and this set is the bomb, if you're looking for Thunder Attack or Free Element, or if you like visually the Kirin set in general. Because aside from the stats, the armor actually actively activizes the inner beauty in all of you wonderful people with its magically glowing fur and horn. My little pony, my little pony. It's actually quite cool and does nothing but make me excited for the Val Hazak Gamma set. Just think about the way that it looks currently with all of its bubblegummy glowing beauty and then just imagine it glowing twice as strong. My little pony, my little pony. Maybe in different places, maybe different intensities, it would be really cool, as simple as that. Speaking of the armor set that will come from Arch-Tempered Valhazak, what does this event actually mean for Arch-Tempered Valhazak? Well, theoretically, it means one of two things. Either the devs have already made all of their decisions and they have their minds set and there will be no changes to Arch-Tempered from this system, and it's going to be exactly what Kirin was, continued. A healthier, more damaging version of the exact same monster, with a partially shiny, partially new armor set. If they do that, then Arch-Tempered Vel will be exactly that. The big issue here is that most, if not all, hunters consider Valhazak the easiest of all the Elder Dragons. The reason that the Arch-Tempered system being just increased damage and health works for Kirin is because Kirin is known to be a very difficult, very finicky monster. Valhazak is not. An Arch-Tempered version of Valhazak would barely change that if it sticks to what we currently know of the Arch-Tempering formula. The reason Val is just not threatening is not because he's low damage. It's his speed. Val is excruciatingly slow, and getting hit by 90% of his moves is almost a laughable offense to the community at large. His difficulty comes from his miasma, which we are fully capable of resisting. Though that said, imagine if the one change they make to Arch-Tempered Val is to just remove the effectiveness of miasma resistance? Like, imagine just being forced to fight Val while keeping an eye on that miasma. You can get one shot if you don't have that resistance, because it's just sort of lines up timing-wise. That would actually be an incredibly more difficult fight from a very slight change. And the rest of it is just sort of his lack of willingness to take damage on any part of his body from any source. His actual personal hit zones are absolutely abysmal, as they represent the fact that he is covered in the dead skin of another monster, which is really cool, but also leads to him not feeling pain from attacks that don't get through that skin. If they go with Route 1, and Arch Tempered Val is just a tankier, more damaging version of regular Tempered Val, then we'll have something that isn't much of a challenge. Most people will get through it as many times as they need to to unlock the armor and supposedly layered armor we're hoping for Death Stench. And it won't take them very long and it won't be very difficult. To give the fight some sort of fair comparison, I would say that it'll be about as difficult as old high rank Vel was when you were originally fighting him in your old high rank armor with your old high rank weapon. However, maybe they'll learn a little bit from the way that people reacted to Arch-Tempered Kirin. Maybe the rumor of Arch-Tempered monsters having more moves wasn't a criteria to be described as Arch-Tempered. Maybe it was just a possibility. Maybe Arch-Tempered Kirin didn't have new moves, but that doesn't mean that other Arch-Tempereds can't, you know what I mean? What if Arch-Tempered Val could be particularly threatening? 
but let's not even go that far. Let's say his actual movesets in terms of the way that you would describe each move is 100% identical, and the only change would come from the speed and recovery time of his animations and attacks. This would make Valhazak a crazy difficult fight. Val is easy because he is slow. He's easy because he is predictable. The only attack that he will do without a huge amount of warning is just the little forward boop charge or the little head and tail swipe that doesn't do very much except just hit you a little. But imagine if instead of doing his massive beam windup where he just sort of yells and, and slips his head back and forth and back and forth and then he does the beam, like instead of that, he just beams. Imagine if he just did that. That would catch people out so much and that's such a powerful ability. That has the potential to completely revolutionize the Val fight. Imagine if instead of rearing up and doing another yell as he does his drop down on the floor dead move, that can do a lot of damage to you that people just sort of dodge out of the way because it's got a really big like notification of it happening. Instead of that, what if he just sort of reared up a little bit and fell straight down? Just super fast, that would catch people out. The main thing with the recovery times of the animations is that they are made the way that they are to give you some space, but personally I think that that space could be a lot tighter. They could make it a lot tighter because these fights aren't here to be a way to farm. These fights are put in to give people a challenge, to make people enjoy the difficulty of the monsters. With this formula for Arch Tempered, where they just mess with the speed and recovery times, the moves would have the exact same descriptions, but be ten times more deadly. And that is personally what I am hoping for from the future of Arch Tempered. Arch Tempered Kieran was interesting, but I think that that's just because it was Kieran. Arch Tempered Val will have to do a lot more to get my attention. I've been Cotton Dinosaur. Like if you like this, subscribe for more, and most importantly, until next time, ladies and gentlemen, stay sweet.